Oh God. Oh, I spilled it everywhere. Oh, it's in my eye. Son of a bitch. <sighs> All right. Well, today, it's gonna be a fun one. We're gonna fire this thing up. Dan here, DD Speed Shop. So, 55 Nomad. Man. Well, we got a bunch of gear today. So, we're gonna do an oil change on it, new set of plugs, zinc. We got a little Lucas, we got some miscellaneous fittings so we can block off the water passages and one little bushing. Hopefully it's the right size to get the water temp in there. I might have to put it on the intake manifold more. Think about it. Uh, a little coil wire. I think I got spark plug wire somewhere else. And we got a water neck. So realistically, there shouldn't be that many things. A few wires under the hood, water in it, a couple odd cents, and it should be able to fire up. We'll see if this thing works. But you're wondering to yourself, but Dan, why would the car be up in the air if you're gonna be working under the hood. Well, this is somehow not my fault. It's clearly yours. I was reading the comments there from, it's actually two videos ago now, it just went out. And I was reading it and people are like, you know what, That uh, I think that guy hooked the fuel pump up backwards when he put that tank in. He hooked the fuel pump up to the return and the uh, return line is, or the feed line is actually the return line. I'm like, wow, I didn't do that. So I watched the video and I did that. So the first thing we're gonna do is reverso the last video or two videos ago and pull a fuel tank out. At least now, luckily it's all wired up and properly done and all that. But uh, hey, I'm an idiot and I can admit it. I'm gonna pull it real quick and I'll show you the error of my ways and then uh, we'll snap back together and we'll start working under this thing. Cause uh, how many times can I pull the tank out of this thing? And a lot of people had a good idea about cutting a hole in the top. I probably should at least drill a hole or something like that with where it is. So I have an idea when I cut the box out later. Okay, tanks out. I saved the last screw and reveal for you guys. <sighs> DD Idiot Shop here. Um, this is feed. This is return. Son of a bitch. Well, all right, internet, I owe you one. Because this would have been really frustrating when it wasn't running, I didn't know why, and I would hear the fuel pump, there'd be no fuel. Uh, all right, so, I must have just got my S, R, R pump wrong. So now, what are we gonna do here? I'm going to switch this over, which isn't in the world, but then I'm going to have to put some sort of extension on that so it drops the fuel down right around there, I think is what it wants. I'll have to think about that. I need a piece of metal or something. Shit. Uh, I'll figure something out here. Stay. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this step by step so you guys can really roast me in the comments. So, I can't even show, oh, there's the S, black, down to there, R, there's the R, there it is. So, what I did, obviously I had trimmed the, the clear line, so I put a little bit of fuel line in, I flared the ends and put a hose clamp in it and extended it. I was going to put the, the fuel line all the way down, but I thought, you know what, metal on metal rubbing is probably not the best. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. I think I should be good to put it all back together. A few people are mentioning about the hose clamps. This is what Holly had and it recommended in the pictures. So that's what I'm using. And if there's a problem, I'll take it out one more time because what's one more time? I think we should be fine now. I hope and I'll go back together. So whoopsie. Thanks for noticing in the comments. That did save me a bunch of screwing around because today I would have had it all together and been all happy, put fuel in it. And it would have cranked and cranked and cranked and not worked. And I would have been mad. I would have thought it's ECU. I would have thought all sorts of things because I'd be able to hear the pump go, but it wouldn't do anything. What a concept. So I will uh, put this back together and we'll actually start the video. So we're back on the ground. I filled the transmission. It uh, recommends just Dextron for the first 500 miles, easy break in miles. And then after it uh, has synchro mesh goes in there, which they gave you everything. So again, American powertrain, man. They take 
the stupidity factor. They take the Dan factor out of it. I did an oil change. I mean, everything came out fine. The oil, probably done an oil change or two on this thing and it's had like six miles put on it because all of a sudden it's idle and move it into the garage. Uh, we use a little Rotella 1540, not sponsored. And uh, I put some Lucas and some zinc in there. I know everybody has their own opinion on oil, so I'm not gonna get into it. That's what I put in there. I'm sure it'll be fine, I hope. If not, whatever. Um, I did decide to change the temperature sensor just right there. Down here at the header and the alternator side, it'd be a bit of a pain to get to, so instead we're not doing that. We're gonna put a plug in that cylinder head. We're gonna put a plug in the water neck and a plug here. This thing is weird, it had, I mean, it has two outputs. That's what kind of got me thinking. Obviously one must be for a temperature sensor and it's gonna be as close as we can to the th uh, the water neck. I don't have a thermostat in this thing, so eh, we'll have to figure that out down the road. Again, I don't know if that's the route I'm gonna run. I had to go out and buy a straightforward one. The one I have that can move around is too tall, so that's, Concern, I'm gonna put spark plugs in. I'll make a coil wire. We gotta put some bolts in this in the uh, valve covers. Cause I have those with T-handle things, but with these cast aluminum valve covers are thick. So we'll do that. Just kind of going over everything one at a time. I'll bring you back when we go ahead and wire up that distributor. I think then I wanna key it over. Pull, I don't have any fuel actually, I gotta get some gas, but I'd like to key it over and just you know, shoot out whatever fuel will be in here. So if there's any junk in the line or whatever, it won't go into the motor immediately or into these stupid uh, throttle bodies. Not stupid, just throttle bodies. Because I'm sure, as I've learned, the more complex things get, the less they like dirt and stuff like that. So I'm trying to do the best I can here, even though I'm a bit of a dirty guy. So yeah, gotta do that. Water in, hoses on, get some fuel to screw around. We should have her running. Attempted to run at least. So we're in the future. You start spark plug wires on. They're just ones I had. I'm not a huge fan of them. I'm thinking I might want to make my own set and run, make them real long and I can run behind the cylinder head and then up and underneath. So kind of hide the plug wires. Some are long, some are short. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. But anyways, it'll, they work. Um, we got our coil wire on, which another thing I bought, like a universal coil wire, now it's red, the plug wires are gray, like it's starting to... Uh, it's the stupid things, but I got this much money and I kind of want all to match. So I'm thinking maybe red wires the whole way around, or if we should go black wires, I don't know. But whatever. I got the plugs in, wires are on, terminated some ends, um, I made my ground cables all good i got a little i welded a bolt i probably can see right there right to the frame so we're going to go uh from there to there there to the block and then i'm just gonna i have to go get a ground cable to go from the battery to that bolt so it'll be good grounds grounds are very very important um i do need to run out and get a few things i got the belt on it stuff like that. anyways i thought i would explain real quick the wiring of this distributor just because there's only a few wires left and a lot of people are asking kind of the ease of installing this setup it's fairly simple the, um, I mean for a guy like me who I've done lots of like HEIs and all that there's way less wires but there's a little bit more kind of know-how to it I guess so this does take some of that out of it so I don't know if you can read instructions you're okay so there's a few different ways of doing it this like uh, obviously there's a instruction that shows you every which way you want it stupid if you want to run it with a box with an uh what's it called msd all these things we're just doing kind of the generic kind of dealio we do have our hyper spark coil hooked up which you can use this regular coil so don't get all intimidated i actually kind of wish i did put a regular one in It'd be a little smaller a little more period correct but i guess i should say period correct and we're putting dual efis on but anyway so we have our distributor, and I'm, I'm used to like one wire distributor. This is a bunch of wire distributor. But you have this one here, which I believe is gonna be like our crank trigger deal. And we do have this wire here, these two spinny ones that come right off of throttle body. So that one obviously will go in there, purple to purple, very simple. Then we get back to here. These two wires here are our coil wires, which actually have a connector, which is meant for that hyper spark, as you can see here. So that's obviously very easy as well. So you got those wires are dealt with. We have a black wire, which is ground. Your standard P 
pink wire, which is your switch 12 volt. So we'll hook this one into the, if you had a one wire alternator, we're just gonna bridge those together. Um, and the last wire is this white one, which this one, I'm not gonna lie, I don't quite know what the deal is. It says on it, it's a points, focus, focus, points whatever it's a points output wire i don't know why they would label it that way but that's the way it is now that's the only one that's a little confusing and if you go back to the last video you remember we have this connector for the sniper kit and this controls kind of a bunch of outputs and inputs so if you want to have your fan controlled by it uh dual fans whatever it may be if you want to have a fan kick on for air conditioning this is what you want to use. Now, if you'll notice, one wire is white, and it, in fact, damn it, it does say on it. Hang on, let me just find it. See that? Points. You'll think my word. It says points output. So this one, I'm stepping on now, will do that. So that's all we're going to hook up. And in theory, it should run. Now I do have to run out because I gotta get a set of long bolts. I thought I had some for the valve covers. We gotta get long bolts for that or longer bolts. These cast ones with these big gaskets don't fit. I gotta get a proper ground cable for the battery. Um, there's a few little things, little odds and ends. But realistically, we should be good. We should be able to get back, program the head unit, run some fuel through the line. Hopefully that'll work. And then fire it up. Maybe. I'm really hoping we get to that level because I'd feel really good about it and uh, kind of keep going. So I'm going to run out. Oh, I got to fill up water, all those little things like that. But uh, run some errands. We'll be back shortly. Well, we're back on her. Um, I will say this the sniper does have, and the guy told me, a lot of wiring. It's all under the hood. So everything is kind of loosely put together. Um, I will probably spend some time tying it up and all that. There's already a lot of looming, a lot going on, which I'm not a huge fan of. And the problem is, on one hand, you tuck it all away and make it look nice, which you can do. But then if there's ever a problem, it's a hassle to get to. So serviceability comes a problem. So we're going to leave it open. The wires are all way longer than they need to be. Ugh. A little gasoline in the radiator here. And, uh... Make sure we have no leaks. I'm hoping at this point, I think I gotta run one 12 volt switched wire under the dash to trigger the, I guess the ECU. And then we can program it, see if it kicks fuel. And if it does that, then maybe we'll try to start it. I put on this kind of, oh God. I hate these jerry cans. I had this kicking around for the throttle. It's, it's wrong. It's not great. It'll need to be modified. Who designed this? This is convenient. Um, so we'll try that. Okay. We'll try that out and see where we get. Look, look at that. It makes me want to burn something down. I'll be back shortly. There you go, internet. Rad cap. One of the dash, everything's just temporary hooked up, but we have a little piece there. I have the fuel line going into a jerry can, so if it does decide to kick over, we're fine. Select wizard. Select what this is. Three, three, dual four barrel. What did I just do there? Three, two, what? Uh, oh, super, oh god. Super sniper it is not. What the heck did I buy? 4.8 uh, super sniper, 
shiny black. Okay, that's what it is. 50, 5 to 7. 50, 5 to 7. Next, number of cylinders. 8, uh, 8, 8. Engine displacement. Whoops. 350. Save. Next, target idle speed. What do we want? Whoop, not 1800. We'll say 900. Target idle speed. That's not what I wanted. There we go. Next. Cam type. Street strip. Oh, that's super simple. RPM to signal. Oof. Holly spark. I guess we have. So it gives me an option of coil, CD box, magnetic distributor. Holly dual sync or hype oh hyper spark that's what I have idiot wide open throttle ignition timing hmm. <laughs> uh, let's say thirty six we'll be conservative it's doing something oh kick the fuel pump cycle. Are we getting fuel? Sorry guys. Oh god. Oh, I spilled it everywhere. Oh, it's in my eye. Son of a bitch. Okay. That was dumb. Ow. Whew. Uh. Damn it. So, I want to pull this line out. And it was clearly dumping fuel, so uh, ow, it's in my eyeball. That really hurts. I'll be right back. This is not good for a first start. I bet you're asking yourself that he double checked the lines on the fuel filter. The answer would be no. You know, this is one of those situations where it's 11.30 at night. We've got problems galore. I probably should just go ahead and go in and start again tomorrow, but... Mm -hmm. I really want to see this thing spark to life through three inch uh, flow through mufflers. It's all neighbors to hear. Be a good neighbor. I have got my fire extinguisher handy. We'll see. Do you have any fuel leaks? Pump is clearly running. Oh, I heard some sort of air pop. I wonder if I gotta bleed it. Well, it kicked off. Let's see if we got anything up front here. Okay, we got we got fuel at the front. Let's kick it one more time. I think we're okay underneath. Sorry guys, I'm panicking here. Can we open the door? I mean like all the lights are off down the block, so it's clearly the right time to do this. Okay, let's see what happens. Monitor, multi-gauge. What will it give us? We have oil pressure. Okay. There's a lot going on here. <sighs> Guaranteed the battery is dead. And that's not good. These things don't like to run below 12, 12 volts. <sighs> All right. Okay, we'll try one more time. Um, I've always kind of heard you don't. So these things need 12 volts, like the ECU needs 12 volts to trigger everything. And I don't really want to put a booster on it because I've seen people have you put a booster on it can fry it. So you got to have like a just a charged battery, 12 volts. So I had it on charger for like 15 minutes. We'll see what happens. Otherwise, it's a job for tomorrow. <sighs>
Okay. On. Hopefully, I remembered everything. Okay, well it shot to 2700 RPM for some reason there. That's a, that's a new one. So we'll see, maybe we gotta do this tuner again. Cause that was not the plan. Oh, it forgot everything. Huh. Who'd have thought? Okay, we'll try again here. See if it's happier. Uh, I did, I just, uh, so I had it under the wrong. When I, when I uh, reset it, it didn't ask me what sniper it was, so I had the different, well, a different one in there, so maybe that's part of it. Okay, well it's revving to 2700 RPM, so obviously that is not the plan, and now is not the time to figure this out. Oh, you know what? It might have a freaking vacuum leak, because it's probably got ports on it that aren't... No, they've got plugs on it. Oh, maybe not. Okay, cards on the table. It's the next day. Last night I was beaten. Gas in my eye, all sorts of stuff. Um, today I took the battery out of the wagon. I had it on the charger. So it should be good. I think that other battery, I've been having issues with it. It kind of gets cars started, but it ain't happy, even though it was on the charger. So we did that. Um, actually, a couple of plug wires to touch the exhaust. It kind of burnt a little. So I put a few new plug wires on, a couple of boots. By new, I mean used ones I had in a box. I'm hoping that's gonna go better. Uh, I was looking online, a lot of guys say it does kind of rev up. That was too much revving, but I checked. There's no vacuum leaks. I mean, unless we have something at the carburetor or something like that, but I just, I double check everything. Everything seems fine. So I'm hoping it was a electrical thing. The thing just didn't have enough jam. And I know these things aren't happy to run um, when they don't have like 12, 12 volts to them. So, let's try again. We're gonna let it run. If it, if it idles high, we're gonna let it go. Just for a little bit, we can make sure we have oil pressure. Okay, it still has its tune in it, I guess. Let's hope for the best. I don't know what happened there. Try again, I guess. Well, that's a weird one. So I just re-put it in the computer. I actually didn't do that after I hooked the battery up, so maybe that was part of it. Let's see what this thing says. 
hopefully it'll so it's at 170 degrees so maybe we'll start learning So it said no data, then died. Makes me think it's maybe a ground issue? I don't know if I changed the ground on it. Okay, so it got real hot real fast, but it wasn't learning. So I just hooked up the fan right to the battery, so we'll let that go. We'll see if, I just think it has to figure out it's learning. It's hunting up and down. It's doing all sorts of things, so we'll try again. I'm an idiot. I was getting mad at the Holly. Wasn't the Holly's fault. I'm sorry, Holly. So, well, 50 50. And, and hear me out. So, for one, it wasn't charging. I, I put the uh, test line in the back of the alternator, it was 14 and a half volts, but it was only like 11 and a half at the battery. So, this El Cheapo wiring harness does come with a charge wire, but obviously, it's not happy. And for whatever reason, when you shut it off, it would back feed or something, it would blow the main power fuse. So that wasn't great. So I just took a piece of wires, it's just temporary. And I went right from the alternator, right to the battery. So it got a good, you know, 14 volts or whatever it is. So it's absolutely key. Because that's a big thing the Holly said, and I knew this. It said, make sure you have, these muffs are ridiculous. Make sure you have good grounds and clean 12 volt power, which I did. I mean, I know it looks a little spaghetti-wise, but I did. I, I, nothing was, you know, scotch locked together. It was all right from the fuse block, all clean power. And I noticed when I first ran, it was, it was running better and all this stuff, but it wouldn't learn. So then I put it to the 12 volts or the whatever, and I ran it. It was running without you guys. And it started learning. I'm like, okay, it's learning, but it's still revving. I'm like, why is it revving? Like, what is going on here? And as I'm doing that, I put my hand over the intakes and this one's just sucking like crazy. So I'm like, what the, and I'm looking at the front, you can see how this spring, was, well, it's all, you know, like springy. This one was just dead collapsed. So idiot I am, this thing, you have to set it like a carburetor. So I started turning out throughout the idle and guess what? It brought the idle down. So I guess no matter whatever it wants to do with idle, the IAC and all that, it can only do so much because guess what? If you have the throttle blades cracked manually, that's what's gonna happen. So there you are. Hopefully the audio on this is somewhat usable because it's just loud as hell in here. It definitely smoothed out this camshaft. This thing was kind of rowdy and stuff. Now it's definitely uh, not so much. I'm gonna go ahead and protect my ears. You only have so much hearing and I wanna keep what I got left. But anyway, so now, I gotta go manually hook the fan up, but click this on, let it do its thing. Fires up, a 
little bit of RPM. Immediately into learning. I have the idle set 750, I think, or 800 maybe. There we have it. Runs good. Well, you might as well hear this thing zing up. The uh, camera on, or the microphone on the camera is always a little better. Hopefully we get a little bit more tuning and get it to have that more of a raunchy idle. Because it was really raunchy before with that carburetor. So, or maybe I just had one, uh, one spark plug undone. Let's hear it. It, it revs fast. Well, there you have it. I think uh, that's where I'm leaving it. I don't know how much this video will be, how much struggle it is, but it does run. I'm happy with it. The garage is an absolute disaster. I am trying to work cleaner. I am struggling with it. But uh, honestly, this thing, it runs good. I mean, it definitely, I think it tames it down a little bit, which is, I thought, a little surprising considering it's a sort of dual, uh, you know, kind of holly deals here. But I guess maybe I can play with the tuning a little bit. And I know, I, th I think this thing you hook up to a laptop, I'm not actually too sure, maybe load a tune into it. And honestly, it probably just needs a little bit of driving around tuning, because on that last thing, when I revved it up, it, it fell down to probably four or 500 RPM, and then it brings it back up. So it probably just needs a little bit more figuring. And uh, I gotta do a lot of stuff. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean up a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can clean up a little bit of the wiring. I don't wanna go too crazy in case there's any other stuff I have to figure out. A big part of it was something that was left over from the car. I mean, that that charge wire is clearly not the plan. And I actually think this is the exact same setup I have in Danielle's car. So I will have to keep that in the back of my mind and possibly rewire that. The thing uh, sitting there at 800 RPM, the motor had 40 pounds of oil pressure. It sounded pretty decent. Um, didn't hear any huge loud noises. I mean, the motor has a couple of little clicks and clacks, but I think that's just the nature of the beast. Um, we're gonna run a little bit. I wanna do another oil change on it because it has sat for a while. Um, the rear end is at the border. I think it happened maybe yesterday. I don't know if I said that in the, in the video. But uh, hopefully, I've paid the people. I'm just, now I'm, uh, I'm in their hands. Hopefully they'll be here sooner rather than later. We get the rear end in here, get a drive shaft cut, and maybe take this thing for right around the block. So. That's where we're leaving it. We have lots of little things to do. Hook up the wipers, get lights, get all sorts of screwing around. But a huge sense of relief for me now that it does run and it does idle and it does kind of wick up. It obviously does its thing. The transmission is not making any crazy noise. It clutches and hounding or nothing. Um, I didn't put it in gear or anything like that. We can play with that maybe on the next video or something else. It's kind of pointless at this point. I have all the confidence in the world it'll be fine. So thank you very much for watching. If you made it this far, please do me a huge favor and hit the thumbs up. Like the video makes a big difference. Subscribe to the channel so you get uh, you get notified every time I decide to ruin these old hot rods. So again, I appreciate you guys watching. I know uh, this this is a break the bank once in a lifetime hot rod for myself. Uh, it only took me 20 years of driving before I had a pretty nice car and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So hopefully it'll be trouble free and we'll have all sorts of fun in it. So thank you very much. Comment below as always. I love reading them. I try and comment back as much as I can. And I'll see you on the next video.